Williams talks is he. Robbie Williams is with us. Robbie, very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. Nice you, to speak to you. And, you, and you too, are you backstage? I, I can't imagine this is a luxurious suite in a hotel of yours. What's happened? Uh, no, this, this, is, uh, this is my manager's room at a local hotel in Geneva, where I'm currently residing with my family. Fantastic. Is Geneva all it's cracked up to be? No. <laughs> What's wrong with it? They say, I mean, I've, I've, I've always wanted to go to Geneva, most expensive place in the world. Not, so, so you, you don't um, recommend um, it? Mate, no, no, I do recommend it. It's very sweet. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very gentle, safe place to be. And, uh, yeah, it, like the winter sucks here, but the summer's incredible. And, yeah, it is the most expensive. To put it this way, we've just had, how many, what was it? What was it? Five, five plates of Lebanese chicken. Yes. And it cost £110, basically. <laughs> Even you look at that and go, hold on, someone, someone's taking the piss. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about the tour. How's the tour gone so far? How much touring have you done of late, post-COVID and all of that? Okay, so I'm not touring, but what I'm doing is catching up on shows that didn't happen because of COVID. I did a big show in Munich that was to over 100,000 people. Um, I threw up on stage, which is new for me. Uh, managed to carry on doing the show. Um, and it was... Look, you know, I'm a middle-aged guy. I'm 48. To have that many people still turn out for me feels remarkable. Good. And then I went and did a show in Bonn, in Germany, and it was like it, it was still tens of thousands of people, but it felt like a real cozy affair. And I, after COVID, I have a real different view on the job and my audience. I'm I'm incredibly grateful to be able to do what I do for a living. And also incredibly grateful to my audience for, for sticking around. Good. It was the Nicorette gum they suggested read the vomiting. Uh, it was Nicorette gum and some codeine and double espresso. You learnt your lesson from that? Yeah, that's so you can't mix them, apparently. <laughs> this, uh, you talk about the audience and being grateful. I, I suppose this comes about when you, when you put this album out and you're celebrating 25 years, you get you, you retrospective, don't you? Uh, yeah. Uh, also, with a break in proceedings like COVID, it does give you some perspective because, you know, uh, I, I think to call myself selfish wouldn't be doing myself a service. But when you come out of COVID and you see these audience, these audiences and you realise what it is that you're actually doing instead of just turning up, getting out of a car, singing and leaving... It does give um, pause for poise and a different perspective on how grateful you actually should be. And I don't know if that'll last because I do have my bouts of being being selfish. Uh, but at the moment, I'm just like, my God, how lucky am I? I reckon. Is it, do you look back on all of, I mean, the whole Robbie Williams story when you talk about this 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 25 years thing? Do you look back on that and think? I wish some of the stuff that had happened or I had done hadn't. Or are you a believer of you got to go through the tough times to enjoy the great times? Uh, well, you know, part of my story and why people have responded to me is because of the autobiographical nature of my songs and my life and the trials and tribulations. I think that if you take out mental illness and you take out drug addiction and you take out all of those things that happen because of that, you would have a more bland experience. And if you are a Robbie Williams fan, then you would have been cheated out of, I don't know, uh, high octane. Yeah. yeah, high octane mental illness. It's all part of the journey. And it's why people have responded to me. And it's some haven't. But there you go. This new song, The Lost, that you've... Uh, couple of, actually, I should, must talk Angels first, because I watched that this morning, that orchestra and the reimagining of the song how do you go about because what a beautiful version so how do you reimagine it without reimagining the whole thing out of existence yeah how do you reinvent that particular wheel yeah um you leave it to much more talented people than you to actually be in charge of that and take care of it it's not my wheelhouse i, I can't think that up um fortunately we had guy chambers my musical uh partner in charge and Jules Buckley that did the arrangement. Also, on that particular one, we had help from AI. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, 
made me and Beethoven come together. So that particular one is AI's interpretation of what Beethoven would have done with angels. They come to you, Guy and Jill come to you and they say, here's what we think and you do what? You just go with it. You say, I trust you, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, and they, they don't let me down. Where are you at with the Netflix? Give me some background. Is this being filmed for Netflix, by the way? Are, are we going to be on the documentary? Is this going to be part of the first episode? They ha they haven't started right now. I, oh. I wish they had, but they, they haven't started. You know, I'm sure it will be warts and all, and I'm sure there will be me giving away too much information about the inner workings of my life and times. Uh, but I'm looking forward to getting it started and finding out what it is myself. What are the rules? Uh, no rules. I'm more likely than most people to leave everything in. Uh, I very rarely, if ever, have said that's too much, take it out. Um, I normally think that it's not enough. Do you have editorial control in that sense? I'm looking around. Do I have editorial control? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my manager, and he informs me yes that I have. But they, you know, they're very, very lucky because I, I want to expose myself more than anybody else exposes themselves. So you're in boots and all in that sense. You see that as, as, as a, I don't know, a, a cathartic exercise. Most people would second guess it, wouldn't they? They go, oh, geez, I hope nothing bad comes out of this. Most most people want to do some sanitized version of themselves because they're scared of giving too much of their real life away. Um, and, and the audience can smell that. And I don't respond very well as an audience member to that. So I won't be doing that. Fantastic. Do you know much about this biopic that's being made of you in Australia? Are you involved in that in any way, shape or form? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in it. I'm of it. It's the script is in my words. It's how I speak, how I spoke. The stories are all stories that are told. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very much of that project. Good. And John O'Davies, I know not of him. He's the young you. Is he good? He's absolutely fantastic. And he might not be known now, but I have a feeling that he uh, is just about to be. And so you will, do you look at him and in any sort of way? I mean, how do you look at him? You're going, God, that's a young me. Do you look at you in a sort of a different light? Yeah, I, 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 I've just been, yeah, I was just originally shown footage of re the rehearsal rooms and I was just... Um, um, every every moment, every mannerism, every movement, every um, uh, the essence of me. It was just like, wow, that's incredible and weird. I love it. What do you got planned for the rest of you? Are you going to tour this album or not? I'll be touring this album. Um, I will be coming down to New Zealand at some point next year. Good. We haven't got the date yet, but I'll be doing TV shows, films. Starting businesses, building hotels, all sorts. <laughs> What's a room at the Robbie Williams Hotel? Corner suite at the Robbie Williams Hotel. Cheaper than Geneva or not? Well, anything will be cheaper than Geneva. <laughs> Go away. You're looking forward to the AFL Grand Final, by the way, the Australian Rules Football across the um, across the ditch in a couple of weeks? More, is it, is it a big thing in New Zealand? It's, not, it's not obviously big. not as big in, as, as it is in yeah, Australia, yeah. but it's a thing. It's something that as the days pass by and it gets closer and closer, somebody informed me the other day that they don't have, and they didn't have to, that traditionally 50% of Australia's population absolutely detest the halftime show. And I was like, well, thanks for telling me. I didn't need to know that. <laughs> well, listen, go well with the album, go well with the uh, tour and the hotel development and all that sort of stuff. And uh, been lovely to talk with Thank you. Thank you, all, buddy. All the best. Nice to talk with you. The Mike Hosking Breakfast, 6 to 9 weekdays on News Talk ZB.